So today I'm going to teach you um, two different ways to do them. One where you can actually turn your classroom into an escape room where they can do something. And the second one is I'm going to teach you how to make an escape room on a Google form. So if you don't have a lot of space or you don't have a lot of um, you know, money or something like that, this will be a, uh, this will be a very, very easy way to do them. So what is an escape room? Basically, it's just a, cha a, a challenge that has a bunch of puzzles that they need to solve. And this is fun because you can put kids in groups. So even if you have a really large group, you can put them together. If you have um, smaller groups, you can put them together to work. And I like it because it's helping the kids. Hey, do you guys want to come in? Are you all okay back there? I didn't want y'all to be uncomfortable standing up. <laughs> but if there's room over here if you guys want to come sit. But um, what I like about it is it teaches kids how to think critically, but they're also hanging out with their friends. So if you have a student who is kind of a little bit lower cognitively, you can match them up with some kids that are a little bit higher, and then that helps them both feel successful. They're helping each other out, and I, I like to see that. So why would we use these in school? We continue to evolve, and I think school counselors are moving from a point where we go in and we do the guidance lesson, and it's you know, kind of boring. We might show a PowerPoint for everyone to look at, and we'll just talk to them. Or maybe we sit down with the little kids in this book, and we read the little book. And you, know, you guys know if you're elementary, they start wiggling. Even if the book is amazing, you're like, this is fantastic. We're just like, ah, they need to move around. So I like escape rooms because they allow us to have the kids moving around and doing something. And again, we're having some team communication there. So some, I'm going to show you some of the cool, cool puzzles that are, that are available. But they're working together and everyone gets a job. So it's not like, oh, I'm just going to put this group together and you guys work. And then the girl that is always in charge of the group, she takes over and then she runs the whole escape room. It's different. So they'll have different jobs. Like one is the recorder. And they're going to be the one that's writing down everything, all the ideas people are coming up with. That's their job. And I like, and this happens at the beginning of the school year, you know how someone will come and just dump a bunch of school supplies and nobody really knows whose school supplies they are? I like to find the composition notebooks, you know, the little marbly ones. Okay, I go and get those. And that can be the escape room recorder's book. And I'll get a fun little pen, and that way that student can have something uh, special to do. Another one is the decoder. So they'll have the decoder rings, or they're going to have the cipher wheels, all the different um, parts that go together so that they can be the ones who actually work that. And you can come up with different jobs depending on how you think that that's going to help. Team communication is important. And the one that we're going to do, that I'm going to show you, is a charade escape room. I like that because I like to act out stuff. And as an elementary school counselor, that was one of my favorite things. Where I had a, a dress-up box, and uh, I don't know if you guys ever do dress-up stuff. You can do this with middle school and high school as well. But I would go and get all of these cool outfits from the thrift store, and then I'd slit them up the back. Right? So it doesn't matter what size the kid is, they can put this little dress on or this hat on or whatever. And we can all have like a little show, we can talk about how to introduce each other or how to do a different social situation. So I like that for this as well. And it's also fun if around Halloween you go to the Spirit Halloween store, you can get a whole lot of things like those Sherlock Holmes hat, cool little pipe. Nobody needs a pipe, but it's still looks cool. <laughs> or you can get like fake beards and little Sherlock Holmes outfits. So I like to do that. I like the kids to dress up. So this means the escape room is something special and it's something different that we don't get to do all the time. So different types of escape rooms. Let me go through those for you. The first one is a linear escape room. And the puzzles in a linear escape room follow a specific pattern. They have to go down the line. So they have to solve one problem to get the key to go to the next problem and solve that one. So it goes like that. And that's easier for your younger kids that need a little bit more direction. And it's also best for smaller groups if you have three or four kids in there that are working together. If you get a group that's um, over five really on some of these things, then it starts to have that, you know what I'm saying, a little bossiness. People will try to buy for hierarchy in the group. And that's why I like for them to have a um, have different roles as they go forward. Uh, Nonlinear, these are best for larger groups. And this is going to be, you're working on different puzzles at the same time. So let's say that you are, um, well, I'll, I'll tell you how to come up with an idea for them. 
But say the ultimate thing is they have to unlock a treasure box that you have in the front of the room. And you have maybe three locks on it. And the students will have to do the puzzles around the room as different groups. But all of those answers are going to come together eventually to give you the code to unlock the three things where they can get whatever the treasure is out of it. And if you're looking to make a cheap treasure box, you can go and get, kind of, you guys probably have these. You know how we get in a storage <coughs> container? Uh, you're like, oh, I'm going to buy all these storage containers and, and do my sweaters and, and everything, and then they're just sitting around your house. So I would get those and take some zip ties, drill some holes in the back, zip tie is really good, spray paint it gold, and then drill holes in the front of it, and that you can put actual locks on there. So the students can come, and you can do one for every group. So that means that the, the code is going to be the same, but each kid feels like they're actually opening up their own box. So it's not like, oh, they already opened it. We already know what's inside of it. That's not fun. This way you can have fun prizes in all of the different ones. So that's a linear, and you can set this up around your classroom. How many of you guys have to float around to different teachers' rooms? Okay, so that's, that's frustrating sometimes. But the way you can put the nonlinear ones together is get some manila envelopes or get some folders and kind of decorate it for fun, like, hey, you know, clue number, or whatever, clue number, and they will work their way around. And if you come into the teacher's room before you're going to start, all you have to do is just put these folders or these uh, envelopes at different stations, and the kids can go work on them at whatever time. And you can, as you put them into the groups, you can say, you're going to work at number five. Once you solve that, you're going to move over to number two. And you can write this out on a little paper for them so the groups aren't bunching up you know, at all the spots. They're kind of moving through. So that's a nonlinear one. And um, it's also cool at the very end, if you do nonlinear, maybe you just have one treasure box, but all of the kids have to come up with one part of the code. And that way, somebody will get to open it, and the whole room will get to do but it's very important that you're not letting everybody open the same box because then everyone's like, yeah, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. Okay. So a mixed room is where you have both of them. You have linear and you have nonlinear. And this is really great for rooms of all sizes. So for example, let's say that they have to go into a locked door to begin the room. That's their first puzzle. So everybody works and figures that out. Then they can go into another space. And then you might have the puzzles all around the room. And then the kids have to come back together with the same code to open the next door, and you can go on <coughs> in like that. So it's just however it works. If you are in a school where you have the ability to move from different rooms, this would be a fun way to set it up. If you were someplace where you just had to work around the section, that would be different. Now, if I was doing a small group with kids, I would definitely do a linear one for them if they were younger, so that they could um, work through it in a small group time. Most times, when, when you guys do groups, small groups, do you have more than four kids? Do y'all normally do six to eight? Is that what you guys are? Okay. So six to eight, that would be okay to split them in half and let them work on two different things at the same time. Okay. Designing the room. This is the best part. This is my favorite part. Okay. You're going to choose your theme, and you can brainstorm on how you want to choose your theme. Are you escaping from prison? Are you a detective that is solving crimes? Um, are you breaking out of a room to flee zombies? Are you evading pirates? Um, if you are escaping from a spooky mansion, that's my favorite. I love that, the Scooby-Doo, right? Oh, we all like Scooby-Doo. <laughs> so that's one of my favorite ones to do. But you can come up with anything that you think is interesting. And if you guys are Pinterest people, go out on Pinterest and be like escape room ideas, and you will find so many escape room ideas um, to be able to work. So the next part you will do is developing your narrative. And the narrative is the story of the game. Like, why are you doing this? Why are these puzzles there? Um, how are you weaving it together to put the different clues together to make one large adventure? So like in a Scooby-Doo show, you know, they have to go to this one area and solve the crime, and then they'll move to the next area, like a linear one. And that's the story that you kind of get. Or, oh no, the zombies are outside of the school and they want to eat your brains and now you guys have to figure this stuff out together in order to be saved. And that's just, I think that's the funnest part, is trying to figure out where we're going to go from there. So you'll want to create like a short two, three paragraph narrative that tells your story. So I'm going to show you how I do it. This one? Yes. Okay. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So this is 
at the beginning, interesting that I did for the kids so that they would understand what's going on. Now, let me make sure my volume. Welcome to the Mystery Mansion. This is a escape room, a charade escape room. What you guys are going to do here at the Mystery Mansion is you will go through different rooms. And as you go into the room, there is going to be a clue for you. You guys will take the clue. One of you will open it and read what the answer is. That person is going to act out the clue. All of you will work together to figure out what's the thing that they are acting out. When you have that, you will type that in in all caps into the space that is on the Google form. If you are correct, it will open up the next room and you guys can move on as you go through your journey. So I hope that you have a good time. I am here if you need me to help. But I'm going to hang out uh, out of the way so you guys have plenty of time to work on it together. Have fun. So I just recorded that on my Mac using a photo booth, which is just a, an easy way for you to come up with something like that. Uh, you can do a video, but you could also have a letter to them that they find and they find it sealed and they get to open it and look and say, oh, this is very exciting. Or you can get a journal, like an old journal, and pull out a page of an old journal and make it look old and they can be excited about that as well. So you can, you can just have so much fun. So let's create the game. What we're gonna do is choose our puzzles. We're gonna figure out how many challenges that we're gonna have, how many locks you're gonna need to get to solve your escape room, and what are your clues gonna be. <coughs> I recommend that you do like a 30 minutes to a one hour game. And depending on how quick your kids are, you might want to judge how many puzzles you're going to put in the whole escape room. So I only have like four to six locked items. Uh, I like to do a combination of easy challenges at the beginning. So they're like, yeah, we can do this. We've got it going on. And then as they get a little bit harder, then they're working together as a team to get there. But I try to err on the side of simplicity just because I don't want the kids to be like, this is stupid. This is frustrating. I don't want to do it. And then nobody wants to participate in the escape room. You guys know what I'm talking about. What I like to do is create a game flowchart. And the flowchart lines out for me like what's gonna happen. So um, like here is the mobile phone has a code and they'll have to go through these different things to get to the second door. And there'll be different questions here and where the diff like if you have a, a nonlinear one or the combination, you'll have things that match, you know, like kids are doing this, but they can also be doing this. It's great to write it out because I'll confuse myself if I start to do it and I'll think, oh no, what did I do? And you're always going to write down the codes because this is a, you'll get there and you'll be like, I forgot what that code was and now I don't know what to do. So I always have like a little map and I always write down how my game is going to go. He, here are the best parts. This is the type of puzzle. We're going to use different things like ciphers, secret codes, message, and message descriptions. So let me let you see. Okay, I sent this, my slides, to the lady that said she was going to put them on that little website. But I'll give you my email at the end, and you guys, I can send you this, and it has all the links on it, so you'll be able to, to check it out. One of those is a code sheet. And this one is a really neat one because it has a whole bunch of different things that you can use for codes. So it's got like decimals, it's got binary. I like Morse code. Kids don't know about that anymore, and I just think that's kind of neat. Uh, Braille is also a fun one to do. Or you can do like a pig pen one, which has different, um, different types of designs on there. So they will have the, the code sheet, and as you are preparing, you will come up with whatever your, your thing is as the code. And that's why it's nice to have a kid that's a reporter and other kids that are trying to look and, and make the connection because then the reporter's excited because they're waiting because they're going to write it down and they're going to get to be the one that eventually says, oh, look, it all came together. This is what it says. So that's why I like to, to put it in like that. So here's another one. This is super, super easy. It's called, um, I always forget, at -bash, at bash And it's just where you take the alphabet and then you just do it backwards. So it's very, very simple for kids to be able to look at. Um, so like for instance, on this one, if you had A, then it would be Z on the, on the books. Hidden messages, hiding, in, hiding stuff with inside of text. These are fun guys. And if you go on Teachers Pay Teachers, a lot of people have already made these. And so all you have to do is just print it off and kind of put it together. So this one right here, they have all of this text right here, but you give them this little thing. And if they lay it over the top, then they can see the secret words that are there. So otherwise they wouldn't know which words they were looking for. That takes a little bit of time to do it, but once you make these things, you can keep using them year after year. 
So I say, hey, do a good job on them right off the start, and then you have it for um, then you have it for the next time. Okay, secret decoder cards. This is it. Let's see if we're going to be able to pull this. Yes, I did. So this little lady shows you how to make these really neat cards. And I want to I'm going to make you a world with these two hands today. Or Valentine cards, super special, with a secret message and decoder glasses. In order for this to work properly, you must print on the same sheet of paper twice. Begin by printing the free decoder background page. And I'm not going to make you watch for a little Next, choose which secret message you'd like to print. For a little thing, but she shows you how to make those and how to get the, the cellophane or the red stuff to make the glasses. And I have this in the link at the at the end, so you guys can check that out if you're interested in doing that. So that was kind of fun, but here come my favorites. All right, move on to the next one. Okay, UV light. If you guys have ever used a black light before, you know that you can write in uh, certain types of paint, and you can then have the, the code. You could write the code on the wall, and no one could even see it until the black light. So their clues would come together to help help them understand that the secret is on the wall, or use the use the materials that you have here to find the secret on the wall, and just kind of give them time to see if they can figure that out for themselves. And when they do, they get super excited because it, it's really really neat. You can also do some object assembly with the UV lights. So there's a puzzle there, and the kids have to put the puzzle together. And then they'll be like, there's nothing here that gives us any clues. And you'll be like, oh, yes, there is. You guys just aren't figuring out yet. And let them struggle with it for a while. Then they turn that black light on, and then it will have the next clue as to what they're supposed to do. So I like that. That one's a little bit more advanced. So depending on the age of the kids, you could just buy a puzzle at, at Walmart for the different ages of the kids, and they can put that together and, and come up with some neat stuff. Okay, other one I like is teeny tiny text. You write it so small that they have to have a, a teeny tiny magnifying glass to be able to look at that. Um, also, you can do for them a map of the room so it shows them where the different puzzles are that they're going to have to solve as they go through it. So in the end, they're not like, oh, I didn't know I was supposed to go there. You can say, mark it off as you go along, and this is going to help you. If you are super cool and you want to get some really neat puzzle things, you can go on Amazon. And these are ciphers, and they like turn, uh, the wheels turn. So different letters are different faces, and you can give these to the kids, and they can have a nice time figuring these out. And I like them because they're for smaller kids because it's more of a manip manipulative thing. You know, they're working on skills doing that. But they're also realizing, hey, things come together, and you can uh, make, uh, make a look to that. All right, so invisible message in ciphers. This is just a short clip that I think is funny. With ingredients you can find in your desk. You'll need the following items a white crayon, a colored marker, a piece of paper. This one's pretty straightforward. You just need to get out a piece of paper and use your white crayon to write the message. The toughest part of this is remembering where you wrote it. You don't want to scribble all over your message after all. Once you're satisfied with your message, you can hand it to a friend. Anyone else will think you handed your friend a blank piece of paper. But if your friend draws over the paper with a colored marker, your message will be revealed. Whoa. This is because the ink in the marker won't stick to the waxy crayon. It's the perfect invisible ink. Now this requires drawing a lot of lines. But don't worry, we already did the hard work for you. For this you'll need cardstock, a pen, paper fasteners, glue, scissors, Templates that you can download from the description box and the link below. There should be two of them, one slightly bigger than the other. Okay. Once you've printed the templates, cut them out with the cards. We don't have to watch the young man. I thought the girl had very good energy. <laughs> I have a feeling her mom, her stage mom, is off on the corner. <laughs> hey, I thought she was fine. All right, so this is another one that you can do is slice up the paper. So write the message on there and then run it through a shredder or you can cut it yourself and just give them the jumble of the, of the pages together and then they have to come together to figure out how to do damage. Another one is secret letters. I like this because it's like you could even take a, a page out of a book, you'd be like, it's on page 59, and then you go through and you underline the words that are important and then the recorder will write down all of the, the things that are underlined as, they, as one of the other students tells them, 
And so the answer here is under the hat. So they know that they can go and they can look under the hat and that's what it's going to be. Okay, this is a little bit more <coughs> difficult, but I think it's kind of clever. If you had a lock that had three numbers on it that they have to use, you could give them different lengths of yarn. And as they measure the yarn, it's going to come up with that number, right? So then yellow is 10, it will be like 9, or whatever the, the lengths of them are. So those three numbers will come together to figure out what the lock is. So you could say, you know, red 1, and they'll be like, I don't understand this. And you'd say, you know, yellow is, is the second one and blue is the third one. And then they have to work together to figure out how we're going we're gonna to see how that works. All right. You decided that you're going to make a neat room. You got to figure out where you're going to hide stuff. Haha, <laughs> super sneaky. Where are the kids going to look? Okay, what's this one right here? I can't see it good. What is this? Now I'm on. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Okay, so this is the clue right here. And this is a pen. And so she's screwed open the pen. She's wrapped it up really, really tight. And she's put it inside of the pen. So you just could have the pen there. And the kids will be like, well, there's just a pin here. And you're like, well, you know, you got to solve a mystery. And let them kind of mess around until they come up with that. I thought that one was a clever one that I would not have come up with. Okay, here's another one. The lady has a picture in the room. Maybe in your classroom you have a picture of your favorite pet. You can put the clue on, on that behind the dog. And you could be like, look at the dog or go find the dog. And they would find it. They would be like, why are there's nothing here? <laughs> you got them on that one. I'll have to figure it out. This is super, super neat. And I found the tutorial on how to make this. So when they turn the lamp on, it has a secret clue on it. And when they turn it off, it doesn't. It's very, very easy, and you don't have to make it so fancy like this lady does. But you can make the clues. You could do it in Morse code. You could do it in the different designs. And then when the kids turn it on, they'll be like, oh, that's so cool. OK, another one is putting it inside of something. So inside of a stick of gum, or put it inside a candy bar, or a box of chocolates, anything like that. Up with. Okay, here's another one. Secret secret message bottle. You could have a, a bottle, like I just did that. It'd be neat if you could have a wine bottle. I don't know if people give hard time in school for something. You could have a sparkling. I don't know how people are sometimes. But just, you know, just have a small something and maybe they have to count how many things are inside of it and that gives them a clue to be able to open something. So I like that as well. Okay. So the one I'm going to show you here is Google Forms because I knew there'd be a lot of us and there wouldn't be a whole lot of space. And this is an easy one that I can that I can share with you. Um, I start out. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Canva. Uh, if you if you're an educator and you don't know about Canva, let me tell you, <laughs> Canva is this design software program, and they give teachers a free account forever. And when I was doing this, it popped up, and it was like, Dr. Moon, this is your 200th uh, presentation in Canva. <laughs> And I was like, oh, I'm so fancy, and it wanted to give me a, a little printable sheet. But my, I decided that mine was going to be the escape from the mystery mansion. First thing I did, I plotted it all out. How was everything going to go? This is what it is going to look like when we, when we actually do it. Then I did my little thing where I went on photo booth, and I recorded my information on how to do it. I went over to my good friend, Canva, and I was able to create my little title that I'm going to put in Google Forms. So it looks fun right from the get-go. Thank you, Google. And you can go in Canva and just type in what you wanted. So I did um, a YouTube banner for one of mine, but I also did a Google header for the other one. All right, so let me get, I'm running off of my, I'm running off of my phone. I've linked it to it. So I'm hoping that this will work. And you guys can see how it actually works out. So they come in, and this is the Mystery Mansion of Friendship Sherrod Escape. So welcome to the mansion. You are here. It's an ancient estate, rumored to be filled with puzzles and secrets. As a group of high school students, you've stumbled upon the old mansion. You believe it to hold the key to friendship. And you get to make it all like hokey, you know, just really get into the story that you're giving. And so then the students will click on the little video that I have. It'll pop up Hi there. Hi, guys. Welcome to the event. So now they, now they know what's up. Then we go into the different clues. And once again, I use Canva to create my different clues. So it says, um, the parlor of the mansion is a serene haven, and it's elegant and comfortable. And crystal chandelier. So do you know who wrote this? My good friend, ChatGPT. Oh, yeah. I went in there, and I said, I need, I want to do this. Uh, give me some names of funny rooms that would be in there. And it's like, certainly. And it came up with all this. And I was like, give me some ambiance and background for the room. And it's like, I'd love to do that for you. So it did. 
So uh, here we have, have one student open the envelope in the chest to act out the clue. Enter your answer in capitals. You're always going to want to do capitals, and I'll show you why. So we help you out with this one real quick. You don't have to. I'm not going to. Uh, I'm not going to scare you. <laughs> Let me pull up my code here. Okay, so one student would have a little envelope that they would go into, and then two of them would act it out. Okay, so here we go. Okay, you guys have to figure out what this is. What is it? Okay, it's a hug. Thank you so much. So then you will type in hug, and you will move on to the next one. Oh, and that's fine. You can make it a little bit more difficult, but I didn't want to make it super, super hard. All right. So another student opens up the envelope, and they know what the answer is, like I did. And they will act it out. So the second one is, I am an action representing cooperation, act it out. Somebody come and act it out. Yeah. <laughs> what is it? High five. There we go. Type it. High five. And the kids, uh, let's say that we didn't get it right. Let's just say we just called it a five. And we didn't do it correctly. Oh, no. It says, nope, try again. The answer should be in all caps. And then you're like, oh, yeah, okay. High five. Yay. Okay. So now we've moved into the friendship foyer. Uh, the clue is, I'm in action and signify trust and partnership. Act it out. All right. So I will come over here. Since you're in the front, I'm going to do it for you. Oh, yeah. What is it? Pinky, Pinky Promise. So we put Pinky Promise in there. And if it's hokey, you think chat GPT. <laughs> <laughs> Pinky Promise. But I didn't do all charades in these. I also did um, a cipher key. And this was super fun. I just typed in cipher keys for kids. And it came up with a whole bunch. You can do emojis. You can do like pictures and stuff like that. And this one was me. So I'm going to let you guys figure out the cipher. And whoever figures it out, I will type it in there. Oh, you all can't see it well enough? It's too small. Let's see if I can make it. There we go. There we go. All right. I'm going to start with a blank document. 
for this particular one that I'm going to do, I am going to begin by setting up my theme. And the theme is basically what you want it to look like. So over here, I have selected different fonts. So for my header, I have selected this Fajal one at 24 points. Um, the question, I have also chosen that just because sometimes I like fonts and I think, oh, they're so fun. And then the text, I've used Roboto 12. And whenever I choose a text that's actually going to be good questions, I want to make sure that it's a text that's readable. So not just a text that I think is fun, but one that's not going to be hard for the kids when they're looking at For my header, I am going to choose an image. I have already made my header. I am going to show you how I did that over in Canva. So if you're not familiar with Canva, it's a wonderful design program. And it has an educator account that will let you make a whole lot of different things. Really so prior to this, I made my Mystery Mansion header. Bring that in and load it up. Okay, and I am happy with it. And the last thing that I will choose is my color. And I wanted that neat purple look. I don't see it there. So I will make me a purple. I like that. Add it in and I am selecting it. So now I have the background all ready to go for my mystery, uh, mystery mansion, Friendship Tree Escape. I particularly like this whole Google Forms because I can make a escape room, but I can have different kids in small groups <coughs> working on it at the same time. So that way they can come in and use your Chromebook or use their iPads, you can put them in small groups of three so that they can work together. So you can have a whole class of 30, then you can have, you know, smaller groups in there kind of working on everything at the same time. They don't all have to work together as an entire class. So to begin, I have decided to say welcome to the Mystery Mansion. And I promise I'm not going to type everything out. I cut and pasted it for you. All right, exclamation because we're excited that they're there. <laughs> and I have already written up a little bit of blurb to kind of give them the ambiance of what they should expect at the Mystery Mansion. So we say, welcome to the Mystery Mansion, an ancient estate rumored to be filled with enigmatic puzzles and secrets. As a group of high school students, you have accidentally stumbled upon this old mansion, believed to be holding the key to understanding the essence of true friendship. Your mission is to navigate the mansion's perplexing rooms by solving charade-based puzzles that unravel the mysteries hidden within. And I'm not gonna I had just been high school students, <coughs> and this one is actually better for middle school. Now I'm going to add a video that I have already made over in YouTube. And copy it, and paste it in here. And it's gonna pull this up, I'll select it. And now I have my little video. So let's go over here and check it out over in the preview. So when they come in, they will come to the Mystery Mansion. It will say hello to them. If we click on the Hi video. guys, welcome to the Mystery Mansion. This is a escape room, a charade escape room. What you guys are gonna do here at the Mystery Mansion is you will go through different rooms. And as you go into the room, there is going to be a clue for you. You guys will take the clue, one of you will open it and read what the answer is. That person is gonna act out the clue. All of so that gives you a way to give an, give an introduction about what you're going to do. All right. So after that, you are going to add a section break. And when you add a section break, if you go back over to the preview, we don't see that bottom question anymore. So they're going to be able to go to the next section onto the very first clue. Now that we have our theme set and we have our intro slide completed, we're going to start working on the questions. So for section two, we are welcoming everyone to the empathy club. already done my writing out for that. <clears throat> Alright, so here we have the parlor of the mansion is serene, having an air of elegance and comfort. So it goes on and on, and once they get down to it, they are going to have to solve a charade to move over into the next room. So this is where your question starts. It will ask you to title your question, and so I have made a little thing over in Canva to show what, uh, to give the clue. So I have written over here that have one student open the envelope and act out the clue. 
but enter your answers in capital letters because that's going to be very important for it to be able to work. So to be able to do this, we're going to select short answer and I'm going to bring in the picture of my clue over here for the empathy parlor. Okay, now my clue is in there. I'm a gesture of caring and under understanding acted out. And then I'm going to need to go to this place that says required and response validation. You will choose text, and the text, the answer for this one that they're going to have to act out is a hug. So I make sure that hug is in all caps, and then it will ask you to put in a custom error text, which could be something like, you know, let's try again. And that will be our second one. So let's move on to the next section. So here, the video does go on for like 20 minutes. Communication. But you will have the link. And so when you're making yours, you can look at what I've done. Congratulations. You go into the app. And again. then you can, you can put each part together. Because I would, I would get confused. I was watching a video on YouTube that was similar to this. And so I was like, oh, they're not making it very clear. So I tried to make it super clear for you guys. So each one you can say. And you can make it as long as you want or as short as you want. It just, um, it's just up to you. So I just use Canva and I use Google Forms. If you want to do a super, super fun one, I recommend you go out to Teachers Pay Teachers and look at some of the stuff they got out there. I don't know what those ladies are doing. I mean, are they teaching and running an art, you know, graphic design? But uh, I pulled one off and I did it with my interns and it was fantastic. So if you are not super, uh, you don't want to spend a lot of time doing it, go out there and, you know, help them out. So I have put all of the links to the different things, that I, uh, the different ciphers and all that stuff, the lampshade tutorial, that's all on there. I sent it to the lady who said she was going to put the slides on that advertisement. But if she didn't, that's okay. But my email, I'll pull that up there so you guys can write it down, um, is moon at uh, ulm.com, University of Louisiana, Monroe, and oh, it should be edu. Oh, there's a few. So you guys can just send me an email and I can send you the presentation and the links to it and you should be able to, to have fun. And if you do make one and you have it, uh, if you have like a, on a Google form and you have the little share, I would love to see what you guys do. And if you send it to me to share and you don't mind, I'd like to put it on my website so like everyone can come and look at them and use them for different stuff. But um, yeah, so that's all I have for you today. I hope that's helpful and uh, I'm glad that you were able to come and hang out with me.